All right, as we move across the cemetery here, we've got some other unique stones. And once again, these are very old shape shell. So if you ever come across these, typically they were born in about the early 1800s to late 1700s, early 1800s. Um, this is, let's see if I can step up and tell y'all, G. Britton, who was born in 1918 and departed this life November the 15th of 1941, aged 22 years and three months. But like I said, usually you're gonna find these shapes with the late, or the early 1800s, late 1700s, um, and they are usually larger stones. So that stone is almost as tall as I am, and I am five foot one. Um, so typically you're gonna find those there, about that time period. Let's see if we can walk around here. Maybe we'll be able to see who these other two individuals are. Maybe we'll get lucky and see who these other two folks are. Yes, we will be. Um, this is William Sprout, who was the consort. Again, we have consort of, in memory of William Sprout, consort of Judith Sprout. Now that's interesting. Usually you hear the women being consort of men. Born 1791 and died in 1843. And then this one is difficult to read. This is probably Miss Judith over here. Wander back here a little bit more and see what else we can find. Again, we have that old shape. And this is John Boyd, born 1785. He was a member of the Cumberland Presbyterian Church and died July, July 31st, maybe, of 18 and 13. Again, I'm telling y'all, if you see this shape, such an old shape. And if you see little dots of light get going across, once again, it's my shirt. I shouldn't have worn a sparkly shirt today. Now, if we step up here, we have a lot of symbolism on these graves. So, we have the flowers, and these are snowdrops. Okay? Snowdrops, I'll put in the meaning right here. I don't remember them off the top of my head, but they do have total significance at that point. Back in the day, they used to put different flowers on graves for different meanings, as well as how old that flower was. So like if you saw a rose that was a bud, it would mean that someone had died when they were young. Whereas if you saw a rose that was a full rose, that meant that they lived a full life. Kind of like the column thing. So if you see a column that is a full column, that means a full life. If you see a column that's broken, that means a life cut short. Same thing with a lot of different things. If you see like a younger or smaller version, a lot of times it symbolizes life cut short. Okay, so we'll go back to this. We have Mr. James Boyd, born March of 18 and 22 and died August of 18 and 23. And we do have the hand again pointing up, saying that they expected him to go to Christian and that he was a good man. And we have this one over here. I can see 1884 on the bottom, but it's hard to make out the rest. And we come over here. We continue to have these old shapes, but now these are, are quite a bit smaller. So they probably didn't have as much money. Um, would be my guess as to why they are smaller. Over here we have 18 and 30. To 18 and 30... Three, I believe and then we've got one that unfortunately has been knocked over That's sad let's see and we'll try to step forward here in some of this again we have one that's been knocked over the the footstone is there but it's been knocked over and these are difficult to read because of the way that the Sun is hitting them right now so let's step forward here. Here we have a Miss Amelia, and that's beautiful. Look at the engraving on this. Absolutely gorgeous. And then we have the peace lily, at the, or not peace lily, but we have uh, the Easter lily at the top. Beautiful. And then this is Estelle, Mrs. Estelle. She was the infant of Florence Andrews and that's a really unique shape for a grave doesn't have a date on it that I can see but 
what a unique what a unique shape now right next to miss mrs stell are her parents florence and wf andrews and as we come forward here a little bit guys i'm going to show you the lamb here at the top of this one you can still see the ears are still intact and every bit of it little legs little spindly legs you can even see the little pointed hoofs there it's in fantastic shape very difficult to read the inscription on it though all right so before we go any farther i'm going to walk back this way so you guys can see the gated one let me go around Try to go around the folks who are here on the ground. This is Miss Macy. Died in 1838 and was born 18 and 10. So she was very young. We have John Campbell. And he would have possibly been at the time of the Revolutionary War. Kind of like the other gentleman that we saw. He was born in 1778 and died in 1833. Step over here. This is General Campbell. Born March the 6th of 18, or 1784 and died 18 and 29. If you, number there, if you notice, there are numbers next to them. So if you're able to come out here to this cemetery... Then you guys can actually get one of the pamphlets and walk around and read the stories. But today we're just doing the general tour. Again, here we've got the old Gothic style gravestone. This is William Campbell. He was born in 1780 and died in 18 and 33. Something went on here in 18 and 33, clearly. We've seen several graves with that date on it. Now there are some that are down like this that you're not going to be able to know who they are, but you can see on this back line here, we've got several that are laid down. Um, they are face up, so you can still see them, but they are laid down. Here we have another patriot of the American Revolution. This is Robert Paisley. We departed this life on April the 4th of 1828 in the 89th year of his age. He was for many years a respectable member and elder of the Presbyterian Church. Very cool. Next to him you have Jane Paisley White. And it says, a revolutionary soldier. 1737 to 1804. Y'all, we'll have to check that out. Wife of, wife of. Okay, I was going to say, I can't believe that a woman was in the Revolutionary War. See what else we can find here. We have persimmons on the ground here. They're good eats. Margaret Paisley, consort of Robert. She passed away in 1795. All right, let's take a look here. We have Miss Nancy, born 1796 and died in 1859. It's a really simple shape for that time period, y'all. And then we have one here that almost looks like it's a footstone, and I would say it is because it just has initials, but then again, um, something to keep in mind when you go to a cemetery is sometimes you'll find a cemetery, as we can see, Miss Nancy has a very simple shape, but sometimes the families couldn't afford a lot, y'all, and so they would spend a lot on the stone and on the shape and on the design, because you can see that it actually does have a design all the way around the edge, but when they had done that because they had such modest means, sometimes all they had was the money to put in initials. They didn't have the money to do a full name or dates or anything. So when you go through a cemetery, if you see a real elaborate stone or in a stone like this in a cemetery where clearly we had modest means, that may in fact be the case that went here is that they wanted him to have a stone or her to have a stone, but they just couldn't afford the rest. But it was important to them that they have a stone that in their minds was very respectable. So something to keep in mind there with that one as you can see there are stones here that you just they're lost to time this cemetery has done a fantastic job of researching exactly who was here so 
they can tell you most of who's in here but at the same time there are going to be occasional ones that are like that this is William Moses Mays born 1859 and died in 1855 <laughs> Alright, let's see what else we can find in here. By the way, y'all, it is a gorgeous day out here today. It is, the weather is fantastic. It's not too hot. It, it's really, really nice. And that doesn't happen all the time. So, I had to say, it's a nice day. These you can't read, but they're a really cool shape. You know, look at these. Let's see what else we can find here. If I can make it back in amongst all this. So on this one you've got a hand pointing heavenward sitting on top of on top of a box. This is Elizabeth Olson, born 18 and 53 and died in 1903. And we have that same design here next to Mr. Olson on Mr. Olson's grave. It says, at rest on top. Interesting. Ooh. This is James. R.M. James, or R. James. 18 and 23 to 18 and 92. And this one is... And then you have Susan Hayes, Forever in Our Hearts. And they put a new, a new piece out here that is 18 and 30 to 18 and 97. Let's keep exploring a little bit and then we'll go over to the big stones. The Olsen family clearly lived here for a good while. Here's Nanny and Joseph. She passed away in 72 and he passed away in 43. It's a long time to have to miss your honey. A long time. Oh, this one's nice. Here's another example of the pulpit grave with the Bible up at the top. And on this one you can see you have the star, you have the gates of heaven, and then the rays coming down, but it's a really nice example of that. This is Robert Keaton, 18 and 85 to 19 and 19. Beautiful. And there are more Keatons down here. So clearly the Keatons still live in this area. We're going to go down just a little bit farther. And then we'll head back towards my car and back in that direction. See, I thought this was going to be a hand pointing up, but it's not. This is a Moody grave. I believe. Yes, Moody. What is this? Oh, it's a dove. It's a dove. I'm sorry. So we have the head... And then the body and the tail. Gotcha. The dove. Then we have a bell in here. Um, we are not that far from Adams, Tennessee. Maybe 20 minutes away by car today. So this is Ada F. Bell. Born 1874 and died in 1933. Let's see what we can find back here. And then we really do have to move forward. But I want to explore it all with you guys. So if you're in for the video, I'm in here to film. This is Jimmy Jefferson Stratton. Um, November the 25th, 1900 to July 15th, 1902. Here comes another one of those vehicles that I told you kicks up all the dust. You can see it. Jesse May died in 19 and 20. Herbert, oof. I get to wear the dust and inhale it too. Whew. You guys see it? <coughs> Thankfully there is a breeze. Whew. If you look back through the cemetery, you can see all the dust that that truck just kicked up and back in here. It makes it look a little spooky. Almost time for spooky tales, but not quite. Herbert Stratton. 1904 to... Let's see if I can zoom in a little. Maybe y'all can see it better. 
1904 to 1923. Then we have Harry Stratton, 1921 to 1923. That's sad. It's a baby. And another baby, Carl Stratton, um, 1925 to 1925. The Graysons back here. So this is all one family here. And I don't know who came through and reset the stones, but somebody has. Because these are not the style of 1923. These are pretty modern stones. was not a fan of that <clears throat> of that dust at all. All right, so here we have more of the Grayson family. Mary Grayson, I doubt that she's still alive since 1834, so they haven't finished hers. We have Willis, um, September the 20th of 1827 to May the 4th of 1920. Then we have John Jefferson Grayson, private. Uh, Lynn's Company, Virginia Infantry, War of 18 and 12, born November the 26th of 17 and 89, and died April the 14th of 18 and 62. And I'm going to take a step forward and let you guys take a good look at this. That's very cool. Very, very cool. And I believe this is probably his lovely lady, Miss Susanna. Grayson, born November 6th of 1794, and passed away in 1881. While we're here, why not? We're in the farthest back corner of this cemetery. This is a Circe. And it says, children of Arliss and Hellas Circe, brother and sister James, David, Jerry, Jean, Anna, Becky, Linda and Doris. Oh, I really hope they did not lose that many children, but it seems like they did. One, two. Brother and sister of. Maybe those are just the siblings that survived. I really hope they are. And then we have Miss Burton. Miss Mary Burton. Gone but not forgotten. She passed away in 1847. So let's wander on back down. The grass back here in the back corner is not so bad. Let's wander on back down towards the front. Here's another Grayson who passed away in 19 and 23. Some of these stones really do need to be cleaned, but I know that the cemetery is under preservation work, so I have a feeling they have a plan. Um, but you're always welcome to reach out to them if you would like. Let's see why they would not be open to that. But as you guys can tell, I mean, we have seven early 1800s, people born in the 1700s, early 1800s, all the way up to <clears throat> the 1900s. And we're not going to go explore the newest part over there. Um, sometimes I worry if those folks' families see them. I tend to stick more to the older stones. just tend to think it's a little bit more respectful but we're gonna move right on up I'm gonna pause here for a second we're gonna come up here and look at these big stones in this area if you're still with me I really appreciate it that you're still with me and that you're still hanging in there and exploring with me um, while we're walking I'll talk to you guys if you like my channel please subscribe and push the notification button um, and give this video a thumbs up if you like to go cemetery exploring and you'd like to see more. Okay? Ooh. Almost sounded like somebody stepped behind me. Hmm. Alright, let's keep going. 